Armed banditry in Nigeria is becoming more worrisome and something drastic is needed to tame it. Ogun State Police Command has confirmed that armed bandits intercepted an Abakaliki-bound luxury bus, robbed all the passengers on board, and set it ablaze. The incident occurred at Okiadu Junction in Ijebu Mushin on Ijebu Ode Ore Benin Expressway. The vehicle was coming from Mazamaza in Lagos before it encountered the hoodlums and the passengers smashed the glass windows and jumped out of the bus before it was completely razed. Meanwhile, heavy armed bandits attacked a mosque in Guso, the capital of Zamfara, and abducted scores of worshippers. GKB, this can be really worrying, knowing that this is becoming a usual a norm. And this incident that happened where some travelers were intercepted by, will I say, attacked by robbers. The incidents, I understand, happened late in the, yeah, in the, in around, the night. Around 1 o'clock. So my question is, why would people be traveling at that time, knowing the security situation in the country? What do you make of what, what happened, and how do you think we can you know, address the situation? Well, actually... I served at uh, Ijebu City local government, mm. so I served at Ogbere. So I'm very familiar with that environment. terrain. And I know that is the last bastion of civilization. Before you leave what they call the urban Yoruba land, you start moving towards Ogbere. So I had a conversation with the police commissioner and the DC. And I asked, I asked the DC, I want to call it now, the divisional police officer, DPO. I asked him, why should people be traveling at that time of the night? Mm -hmm. And he said that people just assume because it's Easter the next day that they can simply make it. And that they've not really had something like that for about two years in that particular area. Mm -hmm. uh, and that what really happened was that they told the driver to open the door and he refused. So they said they are going to set fire. So the passenger started jumping out of the window. Two things we need to do. There is really nothing called safe havens anymore. Mm. Everywhere is open to attack. And that must be the mindset that we use carrying forward. Because a lot of people don't seem to be aware that being alert is the fundamental function of security forces. Right. It's not saying that, okay, we've solved the problem in A, it may not rear its head again. It will. That's why, that's why the best efforts by the police command in Ogun. These things will continue to happen if things are not done properly. And for two reasons. One, our people must learn that if you are in a situation like this, do not travel at night. No matter where you are going, leave your home early enough so that you will have light Absolutely. to guide you mm -hmm. between cities. Shagamuto uh, uh, is about three and a half hours. If you live, if you live during the day, before the sun sets, you will be in Ore or Benin conveniently. Mm -hmm. Why should anybody leave Mazamaza at 10 o'clock or 11 o'clock in the way and manner that Nigeria is today under the pretext that this is a safe area and that we, we did it yesterday? Nobody will tell you the day uh, danger will strike. Mm -hmm. Because you just assume that because you travel today, nothing happened. You do the same thing tomorrow, and nothing will happen. And I keep telling our people, until and unless we have enough resources to police our environment, do not take such risks whenever you are traveling. Right. I will have mentioned Amotepun, but Amotepun no good. It's mainly cosmetic. It's skeleton. <laughs> so it's only the police that can appeal to you know, to make sure that what they call dark spots are properly monitored. Because this is a signal that if you just assume it's one-off, may lead to their consequences down the line. Hmm. BQ, your thoughts on this issue? Well, um, first of all, there's nothing we can do about people traveling at night. Federal Road Safety Commission is not even permitted to operate at night by law. So they cannot stop people traveling at night. I still believe that when it comes to banditry, it is a lot safer in the night than in the daytime. Really? Yes. Why? It's, um, it's something, even carjacking, 
carjacking and um, robbery and traffic, which is a major crime that is committed in Lagos. Mm. Anything from 10 p.m., you hardly hear of it. Moving around in Lagos, the safest time to move around in Lagos is in the wee hours. I'm telling you, as a former tabloid editor, I used to get um, police seat trap and all that. I know the safest time to move around on our roads in Lagos. And I can tell you that night time, anything from 10 p.m. is a lot safer than between 2 o'clock to 6 p.m. or to 7 p.m. But these attacks happened around 1 in the morning. Um, it, you had, when they said that in two years, that that was the first time. Do you know that area, right up to J5, do you know how many attacks happen in daytime? There's no way the commissioner of police will tell you that attacks in daytime have only happened once in two years. Mm. It will never tell you. So I'm saying that it's a lot safer mm. if you are avoiding banditry. It's a lot safer to move at that time. Again, when you look at the distance between Lagos and Maiduguri, for example, mm -hmm. it's about 1,255 kilometers. Right. There is no way you travel by road and not move at night. You are going to Maiduguri from Lagos. You will spend 24 hours. There is no way you will avoid it. Especially with those buses. How fast can you run? What is the state of the, uh, the, of the, the roads? roads? The state of the roads limit your capacity to outrun. To run. So people will move in the night. A lot of the movement of goods in our country, those trailers bringing in uh, um, goods, from uh, goods the bringing in uh, uh, cows, yeah. cows uh, and all that. There's no way they have to move in the night. In fact, Lagos they said, okay, stop moving in daytime. Abi, mm. Lagos they came up with the guideline that they don't want to see articulated vehicles moving in daytime in Lagos. That's why when you are when you close, if you read the news at ten, for example, yeah. and you close, yeah, on this express, you yeah. see a lot of articulated, uh, articulated uh, vehicles moving because they are not permitted to move around earlier than that time. Even um, cheaper drivers and all that in Ogun State, because of accidents and all that, they've also been told, don't move in daytime. Except that some, some try to find a way around it and all that. So what I'm saying is, it's a lot safer mm. to move in the night. Um, accidents... I'm not talking about accidents, though. Yeah. But to avoid banditry, it's a lot safer to move in daytime. Those boys, too, go to bed now. They operate in daytime and, and <laughs> go to rest, just like the rest of us. So it is not the fault of those people. If the CP is saying this is the first time in two years, that should tell you that that is probably the best time to, to, travel. to, to travel. Because compared to daytime, so many times they attack vehicles or now they kidnap people in daytime. So many. But well, the magnitude at which they attack these yes. passengers is also a question to a call for concerns. The you mean the way? Yes, the way they attack the Yes, we did. No, nobody will have expected that. And that's to tell you the extent of savagery that have been identified, uh, that this guy has been identified with. And that's why we think that if we are serious, we will take out these people. Right. By now, we should know where they are. Look at the second leg of, our, of uh, uh, the, the, the topic. Going into a mosque mm -hmm. in a holy month to go and pick people. The last 10 days. To shoot at people inside. It, it tells you that security has collapsed in Zamfara State. And Zamfara needs urgent national intervention. Because there's nothing this governor can do about it. 
Before now, he probably thought it would be easy. He and his uh, supporters were accusing the former governor of not protecting the people enough. But I can tell you places that I visited the last time I went to Zamfara, I dare not go now. Yeah. That's a fact. I could move to move around a lot at that time because it felt safe. safe. I went to Jengebe. I interviewed people. I went to the school where they picked more than 100 guests. I, I, they did interviews. Today, a lot of those places are not safe. Because when I'm receiving reports about places that I know I visited, I conducted interviews, that people have been picked. Mm. So this is the situation. Casina too, the situation is not uh, different. In Basari, they, 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 I mean, so, so many places, we need to deal decisively with banditry. We know their leaders. How many of their leaders have we killed? We know their camps. How many of their camps have we reduced to rubble? That is how we should, that is the approach. Because these guys, if you say, uh, the people talk about non-kinetic approach, mm. this and that. I'm tired of hearing that. It's just, it's just pure uh, <laughs> English. These boys, you speak to them, you say, look, give up banditry in exchange for this. After a short while, they are back. Casino State did amnesty twice. The governor risked his life Went to, the to go and see uh, uh, Buarin Daji. If you see that picture, he was carrying his AK-47 when the governor was next to him. That's putting your life at risk. Yes. Um, the former secretary to the government of the state, Dr. Mustafa Inoua, went into the den of bandits to negotiate directly with them. With a bandit called Dangote who killed 18 Nigerian soldiers and a captain in one day. Wow. So, what has changed? Banditry is still rampant. Right. It means that we need to descend on them a lot better. Right. Because they don't understand telling them, uh, preaching to them, trying to uh, uh, massage their ego will not solve the problem. Right. They are looking at the money. Mm. And any, any kind of business with a huge profit margin, Nigerians will kill to sustain it. Right. Indeed, dealing decisively with this issue of banditry should take a oh, no, whole that's a lot part. of yes. commitments on the part of government. Well, let's really go on a very quick break. You're still on to journalists. Thank God we have more discussions in just a moment. Just stay with us. Well, before we move on to our next issue of discussion, let's quickly wrap up this segment with uh, GKB. Talking about Ogun banditry, uh, GKB, we just heard BKO giving his perspective that uh, Dealing decisively with banditry is the way to go. We cannot pay lip service to this matter. But what's your final thoughts on this? My thought has remained consistent over the years. You cannot pretend you are dealing with... This is not candy. This is war. I don't know the way we are going to do it, but it's better for us to face it frontally and declare war on these people. Stop hobnobbing with them. Stop pretending that you can talk to them. By now, I, I don't know the country, but you remember the quotation? The man who said, uh, if the terrorists want to go to heaven, he's, ob he's obliged yes, to, help them. to help them go. That's what we should be doing. If somebody is willing to die for a belief, the Nigerian state should be in a position to help them yeah. achieve mm. that dream. Mm. Uh, it's, I, it's, think, I think that we left, we, we were treating this matter with kid gloves until it degenerated so much that we are now in trouble. It was the same way that we treated the Boko Haram matter. We could have de destroyed Boko Haram at that embryonic stage. Mm. But we were just relenting we were, until they came and packed about 270 uh, guests girls. in one day. That was when we now knew that we were in trouble. And like uh, one or two months later, they overran Goza and declared Goza the, the, the headquarters of their caliphate. Yeah. We thought they were joking. They went to Dambua after um, Goza and declared Dambua too um, a, state, a local government controlled by them. Dambua is the biggest local government in Borno State and one of the biggest in Nigeria. You can imagine Boko Haram controlling that whole place. So we, 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 we relaxed for too long. We didn't apply the right pressure. Now we are in a situation in which these boys see themselves as people that you cannot exterminate that they are, they are part of. 
part of a normal normal life in our country where people can get up to a hundred million on an individual they will not give up yes. i had there the former governor saying it that huh, when a full animal takes his cattle to lagos is able to sell one cow for two hundred thousand. You want him to give up a uh, banditry? No. Yeah, he can get one hundred million in one operation. <laughs> but they even took it further. In one operation, they they were collecting one hundred million per passenger. They train passengers along that Kaduna road. Mm. That incident is two years. It was two years on the twenty eighth of March. My bad day. That's the day clock. Two years. They taught us a lesson. The same people moved, went to Kujay prison, taught us another lesson. We should know that by now that we are in a state of war. And until we do what they did in Algeria, until we do what they did in Sri Lanka, we are not going anywhere. I've had people, I was, I was uh, uh, arguing with a, a, a retired colonel of the Nigerian army who said, ah, there's nowhere... Insurgency has been defeated. I said, you are wrong, sir. I'm a history graduate. I'm a old tiger. Mm. I gave him two examples. Just two examples. Algeria and uh, um, Sri, Sri Lanka. Lanka. In Sri Lanka, they killed them to the last man. After 25 years, they have peace. We now, we've been going on with Boko Haram. Since 2000. In fact, effectively since like 2003. But they showed their uh, real selves around 2009. Mm -hmm. So how much longer are we going to be with them? Because Boko Haram has not been defeated. They are still misbehaving in some, you know, some parts of the Northeast. They may not be as effective as before, but right. that does not mean that they've been defeated. Right. So let's hope that the government does a needful in terms of ensuring security of lives.